Um, hello everybody, and welcome to a video about Sri Lanka that starts in a hotel room in the Arctic. I'll explain why I'm here in another video, but um, I'm sat here editing the Sri Lanka video, and for the first time in a few days I've had access to the internet, and I've just therefore read about the attacks in Sri Lanka, and obviously my thoughts go to all the people affected by those attacks. Um, I just wanted to say that, what do I want to say? Um, basically, as you'll see, Emily and I had a lot of fun when we went to Sri Lanka, and we met some incredible Sri Lankan people, some people that really, really looked after us, and were among the friendliest people I've ever met. And there are lots of people there who are fully deserving of your business, basically. So I just urge you to obviously be vigilant and uh, check with the authorities that it's safe to travel and how to travel safely um, if you do go to Sri Lanka. But yeah, I'd, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't take Sri Lanka off of your list of places to go um, if it's safe to travel there because it really... It truly is an incredible place, as hopefully you'll um, you'll see now. Yeah. Um, also, this video is sponsored by Lumix. I shot this video entirely on the uh, G9. Not entirely. I use my phone for some shots and a drone shot, but pretty much mostly on the the G9, the G85, as I usually do. But also the G90, which I think will be the replacement to this this G85. So that was quite exciting. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, seeing a bit of what Sri Lanka has to offer. So yeah, enjoy. Two bottles of 50 and yeah. one of 30. Yeah. The 50 is actually feeling a bit light though. We've only been here for one whole day, so. It's not great, is it? <laughs> no. Hello everybody, uh, and welcome to Sri Lanka for episode one of Adventure One Photography 2. If you're wondering what that is, so am I to be honest, I'm not completely sold on that title yet, but basically the premise is that I'm gonna try and make these travel videos more about adventure, and then photography is a, a close second. Because typically when I go to places like this, I need to remind myself not to just arrive, start taking photos and video clips, and then leave without really appreciating what it's all about. So uh, yeah, it's more of a reminder to myself than anything else. So you're connecting with the present moment. Yes, Emily's here, as you can see. Hi. And uh, yeah, we've come to Sri Lanka for a, a two week holiday. Yes. This is our second full day. Uh, yesterday, what did we go up to? Not a whole lot. Uh, we got a taxi to go and do some cultural stuff. And uh, where did we go? Dambulla Caves, but we stopped yes. off at that herb and spice garden on the way. Yes, yeah, we stopped at a nice, a nice herb and spice garden, which I, I had, didn't think was a thing. We had a good guide, uh, Yar. Yar, Jar, 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 Yar. He didn't let us take any video, but he did let me get a few photos, which is very nice of him. So that was good. And they I had a remedy for everything, and I mean ev everything, didn't they? Yeah, they had remedies for. Um, well, they had a natural Viagra, which he went into great detail, <laughs> giving us the instructions for when we clearly the had no interest in it. Then we went to Dambulla Caves, yeah, which, which is are... a temple in a cave, which not really my cup of tea, oh, to be honest. they were amazing. Like, 10th century... No, that's the next place. Then we hired bikes from... Uh, who did we hire bikes from? Polonaurua. Polonaurua. That is 10th century, like, a palace. Seven-storey palace was built there. So we cycled around all the ruins, didn't we? Yep. So that was nice. That was good fun. Good. And then we came here to Sigiriya, where we stayed last night, got to our hotel, had some nice food, and yeah. then there was a power cut. You look really scary. Yeah, well, I know, because of this weird light. It's called a candle. But it probably meant we went to bed earlier than we would have otherwise which is a good thing because we had to get up at sunrise this morning to come here to Sigiriya Rock, which, uh, well, I mean, this is quite impressive as a, a natural rock. There are fifth century ancient ruins on top of it as well, which, I mean, again, I, I guess are uh, amazing. Um, they're just covered in tourists at the moment, which not really my 
Not really my scene. You're fuming, aren't you, that there are other people that are here? It was like being in Tesco's, but we've we've managed to get away from the tourists, and now we're stood here on this very flat bit of. Right, did you say this is a meditation site? Or meditation stone. Yeah, we've got it all to ourselves. Anyway, so yeah, that's us. Two weeks here. I'm going to try and make some videos mostly about adventure and a, a little bit about <laughs> photography as well, because invariably. I will have cameras with me. It's quite difficult to make videos about adventure when the point of them is to uh, not use a camera as much because obviously you, you need a camera to do it. Oh, sorry, it's a video. <laughs> do you know what any of it is? Um, it all looks amazing, but... It's noodles, but they're like... Ooh, ooh, ooh there's a surprise inside. That's just them. Well, it's late afternoon now, and we've climbed up, uh, what did you call it before? Pyramid what? Pidurangula, I think it's actually called. Pidurangula. So, uh, yeah, we walked up Pidurangula. I should really learn these names. It's probably quite disrespectful to not even attempt to try and pronounce them correctly. But, yeah, we've come up here for sunset. We've got about an hour till sunset, and I plan on not taking too many photos until then, because I'm going to adventure first, Emily. And photography second. And photography second, that's the plan. Quite a difficult place to do that though, because look at it. It's unbelievable. Please, we came up here. It's quite a tough hike. Well, in this heat, it was only about 300 steps, but. <laughs> it's not far at all. But it's 38 degrees. Yeah, and you had to scramble over um, rocks and stuff. Yes. I hear you. But in, in normal places, it, it wouldn't be very difficult at all. So, yeah, sit down and relax. Do I? Right, I think we're in business. Emily's just going to put some uh, some clothes on because she looks an absolute disgrace at the moment. <laughs> My modesty clothes. Modesty clothes. The temple clothes. And you keep on thinking that's just love. That's just love. Great success, I think. Yeah, Emily's getting rechanged. <laughs> Can't walk down in a skirt. Are you a bit concerned that all those people are going to think you're a bit of a diva for yeah, getting changed for a couple of photos? Change for photos. <laughs> and it was your idea. What of my idea? <laughs> I had to walk along the rock. And, oh god. Uh, funny, me. funny. Get your shorts on pronto because we've got to get down this hill before it goes dark and back to our tuk tuk. Because neither of us bought a head torch. If I'm, am I right? Um, Did you bring a head torch? I've got a phone, but I've got a phone actually. I think we'll be fine. Slightly less dramatic. It was only 300 steps up, and I made that sound dramatic. And now, and now we've I got. I think it was 1500. Oh. No idea if uh, if you're following this vlog. If you're still with us, thank you so much for your support. We'll be done shortly. Um, we made it to Ella. Uh, this is our view, which I just showed you. Also, this behind here is our bed, right in front of our view. So yeah, feeling quite smug this morning. Wasn't quite as smug, uh, well, this time yesterday when we had a seven hour train in front of us, which, I don't know about you, I thought turned out to be, um, well, not as good as I thought it would be. You say that? Yeah, I think I was a little underwhelmed. Yeah, it was seven hours of sort of what I expected to be quite a chilled out train ride. Because people had said a few years ago that you can just get up from your seat and go and stand in the doorway and take some photos and stuff. The reality is that people now have to use the doorway and the aisle and just anywhere really as their seats because it's really, really crowded. So, so you can't really move around or no. take many photos. No. So uh, the views are nice, but it's, it's really crowded and probably not what it used to be. That said, I think it was still only about £1.30 each for a seven hour train ride, so. Yeah, a great way to get here. Yeah, can't complain too much. Uh, also, that was followed by oh, probably there the- there it is, there's a train. Uh, what were we saying? Train, so yeah, train. Maybe, maybe not quite as, um, 
quite as impressive as we're expecting. Don't know whether we had unfair expectations or not, but yeah, very cheap way to travel from Candy to Ella. That was followed by probably the craziest tuk-tuk road of our lives, would you say? <laughs> yes. And that was, we went and had some beers last night. Yeah, we did. Oh, well, I had a margarita. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah, so nice. <laughs> right then, Emily, POA for today. POA? Plan, Plan of action. action. Yes. Huh. Never heard that before? No. What are we doing? We're walking up Little Adam's Peak. Yes. Because let's face it, everybody loves to walk uphill near the equator. It's the thing to do in Ella, I think. One of the things to do. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have quite a chill day. I think you can really cram it in, can't you? Like, the guy at the place we're staying was wanting us to do this, go to a tea plantation, go to Nine Arch Bridge, go to Anna Rock. Yeah. And we've decided to not do that. I'm Good. holding this quite nonchalantly. It's actually hurt my arm. I'm going to have to do this. So we're going to walk up here. Yes. Go back, chill yes. on our balcony. Yes. You're going to do some editing, right? Yes. Film a vid. Yes. Um... And then we're going to go to Nine Arch Bridge this evening when the train goes past. Bingo. Uh, Emily has just asked me to remind you. Remind? No, I haven't told you yet. Emily's just asked me to tell you that uh, she's got a cold, so if she sounds a bit weirder than usual, that's probably why. <laughs> that I sort just, of thing you're after? Yeah, I'm just less enthusiastic. I don't want people to think that I'm not enjoying it, because I am inside, just maybe not outwardly as much. She's been a trooper. She's still quite fun to be around, even <laughs> even though she can't really breathe. Oh, that's nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Aww. <laughs> the uh, the guidebook that we've got, Lonely Planet, suggested that we walk up here at what seven, yeah. so that we could see people from the tree plantations going to work. We've just been saying how weird a concept that is. Like, imagine <laughs> you just had tourists watching you go to your job. You can take pictures of your commute. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, the weirdest I, suggestion. But I did want to see that. <laughs> I don't really know what it would involve. You just stand on the side of the road and watch people <laughs> go to their job. Tuk tuk. <laughs> just watched that clip back and I said tree plantations again rather than tea. That's what the sixth time I've done that? It is, but technically you are right because they are mini trees. Yes, actually, yeah. So shut up. <sighs> Oh, we're nearly there, I think. Hopefully we'll be rewarded with a good view. Signs are good, even if uh, it's not ideal for photos because it's so bright. The beauty, of course, of being in the tropics is that the sun's so high in the sky that you often don't end up with really harsh shadows on the hills and stuff, which can be off-putting. So that's a positive. On the negative, it's really hot. Properly hot, isn't it? Why are you not out of breath? Can I can be for about 15 minutes. Got anything to say at the top of Little Adam's Peak? We're going up um, only that this isn't Little Adam's Peak. Isn't it? Not? No, it's that one. Oh. That's all. We're on the hill next to <laughs> Little Adam's Peak. <laughs> That looks really comfortable. You think? Does uh, does this remind you of Scotland? Yeah. I mean, the bridge. Nothing else yeah. about this says Scotland, to be honest. So, if you didn't see, Emily and I went to Glenfinnan in Scotland last year, didn't we? In August. Made a yeah, video yeah, about we it. A, we had a lovely time. Yeah. So that's why this potentially reminds us both of Scotland. Oh, the yeah. bricks. Nothing else. We, uh, we've made it to Udawalawi National Park, which is very exciting because we're here to see elephants tomorrow. Hopefully, wild elephants. Neither of us has seen wild elephants. Have we? Have you seen wild elephants? No, I've not. No. no, so it's very exciting. We're hopeful. And uh, we're not expectant though, because I don't think you can ever guarantee that you see elephants. But I think this is a pretty good place to do it because there are 600 of them and they're in herds of 50. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I've read. I think out of all the national parks in Sri Lanka, there's the greatest amount Per square. Per square. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed we see elephants tomorrow. Now on the way here, 
we stopped at a tea plantation. I said tea plantation, we didn't really see any plants, it was more of a factory to be honest, but we had a tour, it was very good, just outside Ella, about five kilometres outside of Ella. And uh, well, it got me to look in at the book, Our Lonely Planet of Sri Lanka, to read about what it was like. And there's a paragraph in it that tells you how to get there, and I'll read it. Uh, to get here, catch a bus from Bandawarela, uh, get off at Kumbawela Junction, and flag a bus towards Badulla. Get off at the 27 kilometer post near the Halpe Temple, and from here you have a very steep two kilometer walk to the factory, which sounds absolutely horrific. It says after that that you can get a three-wheeler, in other words, a tuk-tuk from Ella, uh, and that'll charge a thousand rupees return. So that'll basically take you from Ella, five kilometers, right to the factory door, wait for you for an hour or two, and then take you exactly back to where you came from for the equivalent of about four US dollars, which makes the other route, the bus, or the two buses, and then a two kilometer uphill walk in 38 degrees, seem absolutely ridiculous. The point of me telling you this is that when you're in Sri Lanka, I've learned over the past week, I think we've both learned, haven't we, that paying for your own private transportation is, well it's not a must, but it's highly, highly recommended. So from Ella to get here, which is about two and a half hours, we paid the equivalent of about 35 US dollars, and that included a two hour stop that we wanted at the tea plantation. Uh, similar story further up in the country, earlier in the week, it just makes so much more sense to get a driver if you're willing to spend that kind of money versus, admittedly, a lot less money to get a bus but then you've got to wait for potentially two or three buses. Again, in the heat, there's no air conditioning, they look very crowded. Basically, get taxis when you're in Sri Lanka, because uh, it's cheap and so much better than public transport. The time is 22 months. Ah, okay. Yeah, female elephant, first trick that time is uh, 25, 26 years old. Oh, okay, that's the first, first time. First baby. Okay. Very successful first morning so far. Uh, what have we seen? We've seen peacocks, deer, water buffalo, and elephants, and some eagles as well. Uh, and an owl. And an owl. That said, the best thing I think I've seen so far is someone paying zero attention to the safari. <laughs> Let me show you around how I've ingeniously secured my bag to the van. So I've tied the waist strap to the, uh, the handle there and then I've just put one of the shoulder straps around that seat belt buckle and uh, seems to be doing the job. <laughs> Morning all, and welcome to a place called Hiriketia Beach on the very south coast of Sri Lanka. We have been at the beach for a couple of days. I haven't really done any filming because the next few weeks is going to be really hectic. So I thought I'd try and give myself a little bit of time off work. Uh, as you might be able to tell, it's very early in the morning and I am just watching Emily surf and I'm taking photos of her surfing because, well, over the past few years, ever since we lived in Australia, Emily has had a bit of a love-hate relationship with surfing. But this week, she's absolutely loved it, which I love because I love surfing. So having a future wife who also loves it can only be a good thing. Uh, not much has happened in the past couple of days, to be honest, apart from surfing and sunbathing and sunburn. Uh, I found a watch at the bottom of the sea. That was quite cool. And this morning when I woke up, there was a huntsman spider in our, um, in our bathroom, which, which got me out of bed sharpish. Hence why I'm here 
just after dawn taking photos of Emily. The other reason I'm, I'm doing that is because, well, it's beautiful. Really beautiful. Actually, the best way to show you is definitely the drone. Uh, it'll be the first time I've used the drone, actually, here, after 12 days in Sri Lanka. Who'd have thought that? Mad. leaving soon which is really sad because I absolutely love this place I've had my final surf which was good fun and then I decided after that to come around to this little point here where there's um, a slightly bigger break and I thought I'd watch people who who genuinely know what they're doing also the shots that I'm showing you now is using a polarizer and I reckon it's the first time I've used a polarizer in definitely over six months so interesting photography chat ish for a photography channel anyway sad as i am to be leaving this beach it's uh it's not our last stop in sri lanka we're heading to gaul next for one night only and uh well from there we we do go back to the airport which is all good things must come to an end but as i've always been taught you shouldn't be sad that they're over you should be happy they've happened and uh very pleased I came here. Can I get you a beer, madam? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's socks smell of curry because she's been carrying packets of curry that we bought at some herb place. <laughs> All my clothes smell of curry. That's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> Better than the smelling of tea. But then the tea is leaked everywhere. Also, this morning for breakfast, I had, I don't know if you can see this, chicken bacon and beef sausage, which I thought was going to be a bit weird, but actually it was all right. And it turned out the main talking point was that Emily had enough curry to feed Sri Lanka. Have you got enough? Just about. <laughs> Shall I tell you about Gore? Yes. Okay. It's a jewel. UNESCO World Heritage Site, built by the Dutch beginning in 1663. The core is the fort, which is where we're staying. A walled enclave surrounded on three sides by the ocean. It's a pretty place, but it remains a working community. Like schools, colleges. Here's, uh, here's that watch I got, made it all the way to Greenland, but I can't believe it's luck. Uh, yeah, so we didn't do too much in Gaul, it was too hot, so we just, we just drank beer and then got our plane home really. Bit of an anticlimactic end after a, a 25 minute vlog, but uh, yeah, it was too hot. Uh, thank you very much for watching, if you've got feedback on the first episode of Adventure One Photography Tour, I'd love to hear it, what you'd like to see in future episodes, how you think I should change them. Uh, one thing I would say, just don't expect too much change in the first three episodes, because I've already filmed two others, including one here in Greenland, and, uh, and so I won't obviously implement any changes that you suggest until after that. But hopefully it was enjoyable. On reflection, I probably should have made it shorter, but uh, live and learn, live and learn. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, from Sri Lanka, no, from Greenland, where there are icebergs. I'll see you soon. Cheers. That's just love. I would never let you down.